Pre-stanking is not officially recognized. This means a high amount of effort is needed to succeed. But succeeding means you rose above the challenges, and any feat carries more weight and feeling of accomplishment. When experienced players pre-stank and put in the effort, it shines tenfold. If some of the following actions in this guide cannot be done, don't be sad. For some people, only certain actions in this guide are feasible. Proceed accordingly. I hope you like this guide. If you have any feedback or questions, feel free to let me know down below in the comment section. You can drop by my Priest Tank gameplay livestream to see me in action, ask questions, and have discussions with me, or simply just say hi. So, without further ado, let's get started. Before talking about the best race for Priest Tanking, I'd like to talk about probably the most important aspect to properly playing a Priest Tank, and that is recognition and social reputation. It doesn't matter having the best gear, optimal rotation, etc. if you don't get invited to groups. This means that it's crucial that people recognize you and your efforts. This can mean something along the lines of making sure to have an easy to spell out and memorable name, which will stay in the mind of others. So if you ever encounter the same people in the future, there is a higher likelihood they will remember who you are and send an invite. On this notion, your looking for group messages should be customized to grab people's attention and reassure them. For example, my Zulfarak message is pro priest tank with best in slot gear and buffs, LFG, ZF. Also, be vocal with your name promotion. It should be nearly annoying just how much you mention that you're a priest tank. I literally will start my groups by saying, everyone okay with priest tanking, and later on end the dungeon by saying, hope my priest tanking was satisfying. Sometimes I'll even trade one or two gold to a random person with the slash say message, a gift from your friendly neighborhood priest tank to help you in Azeroth. Once this bedrock of social cred is established, trust me, you'll reach a point where upon logging into the game, you're bombarded with messages from people asking you to tank. You'll have enough scheduled dungeon runs to last you until phase four. Let's move on to the best faction and race. The Horde faction is moderately above the Alliance faction because of the basic Shaman spell, Tranquil Air Totem, alongside the Shaman Rune, Spirit of the Alpha, which we'll explore later on. If you plan to raid tank, however, Horde is massively superior than Alliance. But this is a dungeon guide, I will be releasing a Priest Raid Tank guide at a later date. So be sure to subscribe and you can drop by my Priest Tank live stream to see its progress and ask questions. Let's move on. In terms of race, Undead are slightly better than other races because of Touch of Weakness and Devouring Plague. On Alliance, it's Dwarf because of Desperate Prayer and Stone Form. All right, let's talk Threat. Threat is the quantifiable amount of aggression gathered towards a mob. If you have the most threat, you now have the mob's full attention, and therefore it will attack you. This is called aggro. Everyone in the group can deal threat. Damage dealers through damage, healers through healing. You'll be glad to hear that even before we move into the specifics of threat, ranged classes at or higher than 30 yards from the mob have to produce 130% more threat in order to steal aggro compared to melee classes. So, bottom line, one of your jobs is to have the highest amount of threat. On screen now, and in the video description, is a link to a Google Sheet that goes over every single action that deals threat. Feel free to see what threat options are feasible for you. In order to swiftly blast through a dungeon, it's advised to do large pulls involving pulling many mobs. 
Therefore, we're looking to solidify our area of effect threat as much as possible. Also, it is our weakest threat aspect since we don't have any threat dealing ability modifiers tied to AoE. Unlike Mind Blast, which has a threat modifier and very much solidifies our single target threat situations. Our staple threat generating dungeon spells are Mind Seer, Shadow Word Pain, alongside the Shared Pain Rune, and Power Word Shield, because it allows us more cast of Mind Seer by helping us with the spell pushback. It also should be mentioned that knowing the layout of a dungeon and moving faster or ahead of the group and or properly marking mobs to establish a kill order all leads to an increased chance of maintaining aggro. If you want to absolutely speed run through dungeons and don't mind the extra effort, use Oil of Emulation and or Powered Barrier on really big pulls. And lastly, the crowning jewel to absolutely trivialize dungeons to the point that you can start binge watching your favorite TV show on your side monitor, the Shaman Rune Spirit of the Alpha. If you're Alliance, don't get discouraged because Paladins with their Blessing of Salvation is nearly as good. Just in general, Having certain classes in the group can improve our threat. We'll explore this later on. Let's talk professions. For professions, engineering helps with area of effect threat through the item, the big one, which in addition to its damage can sometimes also allow for extra casts of Mind Seer during its stun effect. Engineering can also redirect lost aggro through Masterwork Target Dummy. So if aggro is ever lost and the situation seems grim, use Target Dummy and it will AoE force all the mobs to attack it. Losing aggro to the point of it being severely detrimental to the group will rarely happen, but if it does, you'll be prepared. The other profession to get is enchanting because of sigil. But honestly, because of how influential oil of emulation is and how good it is, getting a profession that helps you make a lot of gold to buy oil that you personally like to do is just as good. Now for talents and runes. Talents are quite simple. The dungeon talent setup, 0, 10, 31, is preferred. I will have a link on screen now to the talents and runes as well as in the description of this video. If you want to put your best foot forward, you can switch between Powered Barrier and the Shared Pain Rune when Barrier is on cooldown. This is especially good if you're still gearing up. The Talent Healing Focus is picked and used on emergencies if need be, but it shouldn't ever come to that. Please refer to the description of this video for updates on the Talent Setup if it ever changes in the future. Shortly after reaching level 50, Gear with the suffix of the Eagle is great to tide you over until better gear is gained. The absolute best gear is mainly from player versus player situations. More specifically, rank player versus player gear. On screen now is the starter gear set and best in slot gear set. As I pointed out earlier in the start of this guide, if some of the following actions can't be done, don't be sad. For some, only certain actions are feasible, proceed accordingly. Many people will succeed despite lacking in certain aspects 
by overcompensating in others. I, for example, on one of my priest tanks have really bad gear, but make up for it by having a lot of gold, and therefore can afford really good consumables, potions, etc. Now for the rotation. In the pre-pull phase, always move faster and be ahead of the group. Be sure power word shield and inner fire are active. While running and pulling, cast shadow word pain on your intended mobs with the shared pain rune. If possible, line of sight mobs behind a wall or structure, cast void zone on really big pulls. As they enter your vicinity, cast Mindseer. Next is very simple. Reapply Power Word Shield and constantly cast Mindseer. If a decent threat lead is established, cast Inner Fire to prepare for the next fight while spamming Mindseer. Target Dummy and the item The Big One can be used in survival and threat emergencies. Dispersion can also be used in survival emergencies. A little trick is that potions can still be used while in dispersion in order to generate more threat. Group composition can be out of your control, but sometimes waiting a few seconds for a different class or choosing between a selection of classes with different runes will have an impact on your performance. I'd especially advise this if you're still gearing up or just generally still getting the hang of things. In order of priority, for healer on the horde, a shaman with the rune Earth Shield and or Spirit of the Alpha. Otherwise, both factions want a healing priest with the Divine Agus rune. For Alliance, a Holy Paladin is the second best healer. And lastly, for both factions, a Restoration Druid. DPS-wise, for Alliance, a Retribution Paladin for Blessing of Salvation, which is casted on others. Be sure to mention at the start of the dungeon and just keep it at that. For Horde, if the Alpha Rune is still not present, an Enhancement DPS Shaman or DPS Elemental Shaman with Spirit of the Alpha, preferably an Elemental Shaman. Next is a Balance or Feral Druid DPS for Thorns and Mark of the Wild. Below that, is a Warlock with Imp, which is ideal. Be sure to mention it at the start and just keep it at that. A DPS Warrior for Commanding Shout. And lastly, a Mage for Arcane Intellect. In terms of add-ons, the add-on details shows the amount of threat done by you and allies. Item Rack helps to swap between your multiple sets. This add-on will completely trivialize tanking if you just tinker around with it for a few minutes. I have my item rack tailored to automatically switch to items such as electromagnetic when it's off cooldown. The same for rocket boots, etc. Lastly is the weak aura add-on. More precisely, my very own personal Weak Aura buff plugin display. It notifies of any missing personal buffs, or if there's a group member in the party that can cast a buff on you. Now, let's move on to Priest Tank gameplay. Here's a dungeon run of me doing Zulfarak to better contextualize everything you've seen in this guide. In this clip, You'll notice I pull fairly a lot. As a matter of fact, I'm known on this realm for pulling more than conventional class tanks, despite me not having the best gear or using game-breaking consumables like Oil of Immolation. So that should give you an impression of just how good priest thinking can be. 
If you drop by the Priest Tank live stream at any point, you'll most likely have noticed there's always someone in my party saying this is the fastest dungeon run they've ever been in. With enough dungeon practice, things will come so naturally to you to the point that you can sell your Priest Tank dungeon ones. Anyway, let's play this clip. Straight out of the gate, I mentioned with a simple macro to play Spirit of the Alpha, Fire Shield, and Thorns on me. Whether I get everything is complete chance, but hey, at least I asked. We'll keep it at that and start a dungeon. You'll notice my own personal weak aura in action in the bottom left corner right above my chat window. For these simple speedy runs where I'm trying to do as many dungeons as possible in an hour, I need to conserve my energy, so I'll only relegate to making sure my own buffs are present. Okay, let's start. The first packs in ZF are these two right here. Unfortunately, you cannot line of sight these packs until later inside, but not a problem. Technically, you can, but I would assume the healer is perfectly following you as you take the upcoming corner. As you can see, I start off with Shadowward Pain on all the mobs and try my best to group up the mobs, cast Power Word Shield, and just spam Mind Seer. You'll notice I am tab targeting between each mob. This will make sure that I'm decently spreading across my threat. Here I try to conserve a bit of mana. I'll resort to wanding. I use a Shadow Fiend so I can go straight to pulling the next pack. Slightly wait for the healer, move forward. Cast Shadow Word Pain, cast Shadow Word Pain. Go in the corner right here. This is the corner we were supposed to take, but like I said, I would assume the healer is perfectly following us, and here we just spam Mind Seer. Here you'll notice the rogue for some reason, refuses to follow the rest of the group. He decides to do his own thing, dealing with only one mob, while the rest of the group is dealing with five. Hey, what can you do? Anyway, you just spam Mind Seer. Cast Inner Fire to make the healer's life a bit easier. Sometimes I will try to snipe Killing Blow one of these mobs in order to proc Spirit Tap. This will help with my overall mana regeneration. Here is the next pack on the right. Here I have to be sometimes careful. I tend to line of sight my own healer, so I have to move a bit to the right of this jar here. Seems the Restro Shaman accidentally pulled one of these paths. No problem. I cast a Mind Seer. There we go. Dead. All good. Shadow Word Pain. Shadow Word Pain. And here we're going to go for what's called a Giga Pull, which is an insane amount of mobs that would even rival a conventional tank. So I save Void Zone. There I cast Void Zone. Power Word Shield. Now here, I don't have that much mana. So I'm keeping an eye out on target dummy, if I need to use target dummy. If it gets too hectic, you'll notice here the Warlock accidentally pulled aggro. That's all right. We should be getting back aggro right about here. There we go. There's no real reason to use any consumables here. No one's life is at risk. Here I cast a dispersion as it comes off cooldown so I can get ready for the next pack.
Here I'm gonna sneak in a quick drink. Oh, but it looks like the rogue accidentally pulled. What is he doing? I have no idea. I think he thinks he's the tank. Anyway. Here I cast a Void Zone. I don't have much mana. Void Zone will hit every single target continuously, while I can also cast a Mine Seer. Preferably, you don't want to pull these Scarabs that are near these Troll Packs. It just makes the fight longer. No one's really going to remember if you were able to pull a bunch of mobs, including scarabs. It's not really something to brag about. They're barely a part of the dungeon. It's, uh, yeah. You, you kind of want to position your mind here so you do not pull these scarabs. Uh, they can also spell push back you and the healer, which, yeah, that's no... Yeah. Here I sneak in a quick drink, get my bearings, make sure I'm fully buffed, yes. All right, let's pull, Shadow Word Pain, Shadow Word Pain, Shadow Word Pain. Okay, Mine Seer. This uh, rogue here has been being a bit of a nuisance, engaging mobs even before we engage combat with them, but uh, you can't uh, control everyone's actions, so we're just going to try to perfect what we can do. Here I have Dispersion on cooldown, but I do have Shadow Fiend up, so I'm not going to spend too much time drinking. I'm just going to pull the left pack of mobs here, Shadow Word Pain, Shadow Word Pain, this is going to be for a semi half giga pull. Going to go right here behind this jar and cube. Unfortunately, I got hexed. There's nothing you can really do. It would require a priest to dispel you. You momentarily lose aggro here while you're hexed. You just have to hope that everyone is half decent and the healer is paying attention. Here I wand in order to conserve mana. Here I notice the Resto Shaman doesn't have much mana. So there's the Warlock, so drink real quick. There we go, I think the Resto... Did the rest, I think the Resto Shaman used a mana potion, maybe a cheap mana potion, just to keep up with me and my pulling speed. Here I go for a Powered Shield and a Mind Seer, because this is a relatively big pack. I don't want to get interrupted that much in terms of my spell pushback. Spam Mind Seer. I used Shadow Fiend here. You'll notice as my Shadow Fiend disappears, Dispersion comes back up, so I always have something to rely on in terms of mana. Yes, this is a, this is the moment where I realize this is a boss, not a, a mob, not a normal mob anyway, it doesn't really matter. Ring of Savior dropped, which is a pretty good ring. It's it's mostly a raid tanking thing, that ring. Well, I'll keep that for its own separate video. Anyway, I pull these two caster mobs here. No reason to stand still dealing with these two mobs. You can keep going in the dungeon deep inside. Keep pulling, keep going. No reason to stand still DPSing. You can DPS all of them when you've grouped them up. Unfortunately, the rest of my group didn't get the memo that it's better to deal DPS on many mobs instead of just dealing with one. We go for a Void Zone here. I 
this is a relatively early dungeon run in the day, so I, I do a quick slash party macro message to remind people to follow me. I am the priest tank. So here, you never want to just deal with one mob. You want to pull that one mob and then just keep going deeper into the dungeon. No reason to stand still. It's going to die as it travels back to you. Here, I don't have any mana cooldown, so I'm going to do a quick drink. Pull this mob in front, right, left. We could go for that mob in the back over there, but it's a bit of a long travel time. It's, uh, yeah, so we're just going to go for these mobs right here, mine's here. There we go. I'm going to pull this left pack right here. Quick drink. Just enough. There we go. Shadow word pain, shadow word pain. Bring these mobs back. Luckily, the Resto Shaman popped Shamanistic Rage. This is good for my mana, so I can pull right away. We go for a Mind Blast, followed by Shadow Word Pain. Bring the mob back. Cast Void Zone, because we're dealing with a lot of targets right now. And we're going to go straight into Mind Seer. Here, someone was single target damaging the boss, so we're going to resort to using Mind Blast to regain aggro. Here, optimally, you don't even want to be standing. You want to be just keep going, continuing the dungeon. You don't need to stand still. These mobs die to dots. There we go. Preferably, you don't want to join a ZF group that does the Scarab Shell quest. This, on average, adds about two to three minutes to your ZF run. You, you should spend... A few extra seconds looking for a group that does not do the Scarab Shell quest. Optimally, you would go for a simple, normal EXP ZF run. Uh, preferably one where you don't open the graves. Remember, you're trying to get into a dungeon with random people and get out as quickly as possible. And meet your next group. There we go, this fight is done. So we have absolutely no mana, but luckily we have Dispersion and Shadow Fiend up. Here we just keep going into the dungeon. No reason to stand still, these mobs will die. Now here I'm gonna get a quick drink. You'll notice it'll, it'll take quite some time for the rest of my party to catch up with me. Every single second it takes for the rest of the group to catch up to me, I am drinking and regenerating mana. All right, unfortunately here we had someone disconnect just for a few minutes here, but they're back. All right, let's continue with the dungeon.
when you're coming out of these hex hexes, it's not really necessary to go for a mind blast right away. Essentially, you just need to get back on the threat meter with a simple action. Uh, it can be as simple as just an instant cast mind seer would be preferable. You don't lose technically the threat. It's just temporarily you're off the threat meter. Here I was able to get quite a few casts off even before the rest of my party was able to catch up. Always be faster, always be faster than the rest of your party. I place myself right next to the cage, one of the cages that needs to be opened, just as a, as a reminder. All right, here it's important to really stand out among all the other tanks out there. So we're gonna be doing very big pulls. But we'll have to keep our finger on a potential target dummy usage. So here I'm just spamming Mindseer. I'm not even considering casting Inner Fire. Just non-stop Mindseer. There we go. That was a very big pull. Here I'm going to cast Void Zone to deal with this leftover pack over here. Bring them back a bit. Here I am preemptively getting Void Zone ready because many mobs are going to spawn in a few seconds here. I move forward ahead of the group. Just in case these mobs spawn. There we go. I'm taking a risk here. I'm pulling these two mobs as the leftover mobs are there. We go. They spawn right there. It's going to be a bit risky, uh, but we have the gear for it. And we use target dummy right here and a potion just in case. There, I did a bit of a mistake. I went about one to two seconds without doing anything because I wasn't facing properly the mob, so mines here doesn't go off if you're not facing the mob, so that a bit, a bit of a mistake on my part, but it doesn't really matter in the end here. I cast Void Zone, pull this pack.
There we go. Quick drink here. This is going to be a very big pull, so I'm going to place down Void Zone. Make sure I get a relatively big circle radius. There we go, right at the bottom of the steps, and pull all of this. I actually have to move back a bit just at how much I pulled. A reminder that Mindseer does not deal any threat to the target that you're casting Mindseer on, only the nearby targets. This is one of the reasons why we tab target as a priest tank, so we can establish threat on the main mob that we're casting Mindseer on. Here I'm going to talk, talk to Sergeant Bly and cast Void Zone. Try to get as many mobs into the Void Zone as possible. Here I get gouged which does not wipe my threat, it just removes me temporarily from the threat meter. Here it is not a 100% priority to maintain aggro, the gouge effect is a, a real pain to deal with. The moment you would get back aggro, you would lose it right after from gouge. Here a quick drink. As to why the Resto Shaman and the rest of the party is ahead of me, uh, the tank, I don't know. But uh, this is the reason why you have to be behind the tank, because I pull a lot. So we go for a Mind Seer. Here I should have done this a bit better. I'm dealing with five, six mobs, I should have casted Power Shield and then Mind Seer. But this is an extremely tiny error. Here I cast Void Zone so I can generate threat on the target that I'm not targeting. Start off with Mind Blast, Shadow Word Pain, there we go. Now here, technically, you can mark the mobs, so people kill the appropriate mobs in order, but it's not really a big deal. Here, 
After the boss dies, he summons a bunch of mobs. We're just going to cast Mindseer. And there we go. That's the end of ZF. A very fast run. You guys don't see it, but in party chat, everyone was absolutely amazed at how fast that ZF was. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to be notified of more Priest Tank videos. Join the Priest Tank Discord to chat with other fellow Priest Tanks. If you have any questions about Priest Tanking, don't be shy. You can find me on my Priest Tank gameplay livestream. Link in the description of this video. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.